crystal ball college football. I'm your host, Grayson Grunhafer, and today we're starting our little bit of a Big 12 week and a half. We're going to go through pretty much every team in the conference, talk a little bit about their schedule. Won't be anything too in-depth. I'm not going to give you exact record predictions, but more so just kind of what I see coming up on each team's schedule and kind of where I see tough spots, where I see easy stretches, and where I see some opportunities for teams to either take advantage or really crumble during the 2023 season. And today, I'm going to start with the school that I feel like has the easiest schedule when it comes to conference play. Um, We'll talk about the non-conference a little bit, but specifically during this, I want to really focus on the conference schedule since it came out last week. And the team that I think has the easiest schedule this year is Cincinnati a new team to the Big 12, so we're starting off with one of the new additions. But I look at their schedule, and I see a very manageable one. Now, the issue for them is, obviously, Luke Fickle gone, going to Wisconsin. They bring in uh, Satterfield to be their head coach, and I'm kind of sitting here going, okay. So they're kind of having to adjust the coaching staff completely. Their roster kind of got picked apart a little bit because some of their top guys ended up at Wisconsin. Um And then it's kind of like, what's next? This is a new era for the Cincinnati program as far as new coaching staff, new conference, uh, kind of a new roster as far as the shakeup goes there talent-wise. So what's that going to look like? Um, But outside of that, let's focus on the schedule at least for today. Um, They start off with Eastern Kentucky at Pitt, and then they play Miami of Ohio. That's their first three games. Feel like two and one. Or 3-0 and is a pretty reasonable expectation here. The pit game is, of course, the one that stands out as being tough. Now, the next stretch. Um, this is their most important stretch of the season. This is going to make or break um, what they're going to do in 2023. And it is Oklahoma at BYU by week. Iowa State, Baylor at Oklahoma State. So three of those games are at home. Uh, two are on the road. Um The ones that are at home are fairly tough when you talk about Oklahoma and Baylor. I think the Iowa State game coming off a bye week should be a game that they feel like, you know, kind of a must win in my eyes. I don't know how good Iowa State's going to be this year, but I feel like Cincy can match up with them pretty well, especially at home. Uh, But Oklahoma and Baylor are going to be pretty tough. Um, at Cincy, and then the road games at BYU and Oklahoma State are just going to be tough because new environments, tough environments, and just, frankly, tough places to play. Um, I think looking at this stretch, I'm anticipating something like 2-3 and three or 3-2 three and two for Cincinnati. I'm leaning towards 2-3, and three, though. I think this is where they start to get hit a little bit by, oh, it's the Big 12. Oh, there's a couple really good teams in this conference. How much does our depth show up, especially at the end of this run? Um, I think that can kind of catch up to them a little bit. But if it doesn't, they could put themselves in a pretty good position to be competing in the Big 12 come November, which is not something that I really thought I would say when I looked at the Cincinnati roster. But when I looked at the schedule, some things changed a little bit. So now in the back half of the year, and this is where, once again, I'm seeing here going, okay, If Cincy finds a way to make it through that middle stretch, now the end of their schedule is fairly manageable. They have UCF at home, then they go to Houston, to West Virginia, and then they have Kansas at the end of the year. That's really not a gauntlet. Uh, That is not a stretch that I'm overly concerned about. I look at their schedule and I go, okay, so wait, who's missing here? Uh, Well, I don't see Texas. I don't see TCU. I don't see Texas Tech. I mean, it's very manageable when I look at it. And so in that back half of the year, I'm expecting something like two and two or three and one, um, which in my eyes, based on my math, they're a bowl team. They're probably going to be a six, seven win team, but there's an upside here because of this schedule and the way that it lays out really nicely that if they do hit their peak and if they do play to the level that Luke Fickle had them playing at, they could be a really sneaky team in this conference. Now, if you were to put me on the spot and say, hey, you know, how good are they going to be next year? What what do you think about this schedule and their roster and put it all together for me? Um, I think they're going to have a tough time, you know, getting this roster to the point that it's been at the last few years. I don't think that losing Luke Fickle is something that you can easily overcome, but I think the schedule helps. If you put it all together, I think this is a bowl team next year. Um, again, they have more upside because of the schedule that they have. 
upcoming in 2023. So that's it for today. Like I said, throughout the week, uh, the next couple weeks, actually, I'll be talking about every single Big 12 schedule, giving my just preseason thoughts, way too early thoughts, I would say, on what these teams have upcoming during the 2023 season. But thanks for listening. This has been Crystal Ball College Football.